Hey, Jared Borkowski here from soundguitarlessons.com. This is the end of the year right now when this video is getting published. This is the last Tuesday of 2023. Around the end of the year, I always get asked a bunch whether or not I'm going to put any of my courses on sale for like an end of the year or holiday sale um, discount. And I haven't done that before. I will be doing that this year. In fact, I'm doing that. It's happening right now. Uh, just until January 1st, you can get 15% off any of my courses if you use the discount code at checkout. 202315. That's 2023 15, as in 2023 of the year and 15% off. Uh, so if you're interested, just letting you know that up front, those that coupon will be good through January 1st. So for this video, I thought it'd be cool to go through some of the courses that I have and give you a little sampling of the material that's in several of the programs that I have. Hopefully you'll find it interesting and useful and even educational, even if you don't want to sign up for one of the programs, that's okay. And if you do want to, you can get 15% off until January 1st. Let's go into my course called Chords on Command. This course is all about how to gain extreme theory clarity on the fretboard. And the premise of the course is that uh, from beginning to end, from the beginning of the program to the end of the program, we learn how to um, analyze or create from scratch literally any chord type. So it's kind of like this practical purpose excuse to learn theory, like, but have an actual outcome at the end of it, which is that we know so much about theory and chord tones and scale degrees and how all, you know, extensions and all the lingo involved to be able to look at any chord shape and analyze, oh, that is this chord, or it could be many options, which is how theory works, or to construct from scratch any voicing of any chord all over the fretboard. So it's all the theory information we need to um, learn that. So this little um, snippet from the course is early on and it's about a scale exercise because we have to know our scales and the theory of scales really well to be able to construct chords. So this is a really fun exercise where we are playing kind of a frogger game to get from the bottom string to the top string and then from the top string to the bottom string by playing a scale and crossing strings anywhere using theory and interval knowledge. Here's a little snippet of me teaching about this exercise in my course, Chords on Command. We're gonna start on any fret of the sixth string and then we're gonna identify that note as our starting scale degree and at first, we're just going to call it one. You'll see we'll start on different scale degrees later. So start on any fret of the sixth string. I'm just going to choose, let's go ahead and choose fret seven in this case as a demonstration. Identify that note as the starting scale degree, and we're um, calling it one. We're not worrying about the note name. You could, because it's one, but later we're going to do other numbers. Um, and then play the major scale ascending, crossing strings wherever you want and just get to the highest string. This is like a video game, like Frogger or something, right? You're just crossing. You're just trying to cross, and when you arrive at the highest string, you have done it, okay? So I'll just show you with the uh, diagram here. If we call that one, okay, here's two. We know how to get from two to three. Okay, we know how to get from three to four. Okay, we're on four and we're up on the 12th fret. Let's cross over from four to five. We know our interval shape here now. So, okay, four to five is here. Um, five to six you know what? I just feel like crossing again. So five to six is here. This is not about a scale shape or anything. It's just about crossing wherever you want. Okay, six. What if we cross again from six to seven like this? Wow, look, we ended up all the way over here and we were on this 12th fret here. So that's pretty cool. Here's seven. Okay, we know one is here. We know two is here. We know three is here. We know four is here. We've done all that. Okay, let's go four to five crossing strings. This is that... Uh, three fret spanning interval distance of the whole step along strings three and two. So four, five, six, I'll cross from six to seven, and then, hey, I made it to the top string. Play anything up here, that's fine, but when you arrive there, you have succeeded, okay? Um, and then you wanna do steps one through three. You're just getting from the low string to the high string. You wanna do those same that same exact game starting on a different scale degree each time. That's what this exercise is. So then I have your starting scale degrees uh, checklist over here. Okay, so we started on one already. Check. And you're going to just find a random note on string six every time and then call it two and then arrive at the top string. I won't demonstrate all these on the screen because I will demonstrate all of them on the guitar. But let's just do two just to drive it home. Okay, let's start on this here. Okay, we're calling it two. And then two to three is a whole step three to four. Okay, often I don't cross strings with half steps just because it's 
um, easier to just go, okay, half steps here, and then I'll cross strings with whole steps. But you can, you can cross anywhere you want with the half step. So this is three, okay? So I'm gonna cross uh, to four over here. Okay, four to five, five to six, six to seven. I'm gonna go ahead and cross seven to one, one to two, two to three, I'll cross here, three to four, four to five, five to six, six, let's cross six to seven, seven to one, let's cross from one to two, one to two, we arrived, okay? So yes, you wanna get to the top string and you're done. The goal is not necessarily to get there as quickly as possible, we have a different exercise for that, but you can, you can just cross as soon as you can every time and just get there if you want, or you can play around on the string um, as much as you want until you get there. But you see the point, um, kind of a fun way to do this. So that's my course, Chords on Command. The next one I wanna look at is my course called Jazz Comping Mastery. And I actually have two volumes of this, Jazz Comping Mastery 1 and Jazz Comping Mastery 2. These are a couple of my oldest courses, but also a couple of my most popular courses. This program is um, something that people really enjoy because it's very drill-based and very practical for how, exactly how we practice all kinds of inversions and um, voicings of specifically seventh chords all over the fretboard and then how to use the same shapes that we already learned in the first part and create extensions and superimposed chord shapes uh, for the second part. So what the sampling I wanna show you here is all the way at the end of Jazz Comping Mastery 2 where after the two courses, we've learned all the voicings, and then we've learned how to use those same voicings for multiple different types of chords and extensions. And then we're just going through the progression of autumn leaves and showing how we can go switch. When chords change, we can move to the closest possible voicing. And often the voicing can be like one note moves one half step to create a full different chord. So you'll see what I mean when you watch this clip. This is from Jazz Comping Mastery 2, all the way at the end of the, of the program doing something that I call the comping game. Here's the clip. Here's a half diminished. I want to bounce around a little with this, just I want to play with it. Okay. I want to end up there. Now D7 flat 9. Whoa! One note moved from A half diminished to D7 flat 9. That is cool. So I'm going to do that again other places. Is that going to work somewhere else? Okay. Well, here is A half diminished. D7 flat 9. Yes, everywhere you do it, you're going to have that one note. Beautiful. A half diminished. D7 flat 9. Okay. A half diminished. D7 flat 9. Where's that D? Oh, here's that normal D. Placement approach flat nine. Hope you're seeing seeing how this could this could work. Really take it from the ground up though, and be like slow, slow, slow about it. Okay, here's my D seven flat nine. Where is my G minor six? Ooh, beautiful. That's that Miles Davis note, specifically on this tune, to the famous version of, uh, of Autumn Leaves that Miles Davis did uh, with I think Cannonball Adderley. They land on that G, G minor six. That, that might even be why this tune is, is played that way now. I don't know if it was before that. Um, so, cool. G minor six, all right. G minor six, now I'm just jumping around wanting to make sure I'm seeing. G minor six, enjoying it. All right, ready to go to back to that repeat C minor nine again. Oh my gosh. G minor six to C minor nine, one note change, again like before. So now I want to experiment with that everywhere. Shoot, okay, well, here's one of the G minor sixes. Whoa, there's the C minor nine. Oh my gosh. So freaking cool. Here's that C root. That's one of the ones we did in the exercise. I don't expect you to see these while I'm playing it. I'm just giving you an example of how, how I'm going about it. So that's Jazz Comping Mastery. The next course I want to show a sample of is my course called Introduction to Fingerstyle Guitar. I actually might be renaming this course um, later on and um, adding a bunch to it so it's more of a really comprehensive um, fingerstyle guitar course. But for now, it's called Introduction to Fingerstyle Guitar. It does have some 
advanced stuff in it as well, but it also has some really simple kind of introductory Travis picking uh, lessons in it. Um, and one of the lessons has an etude for connecting bass lines between chords while using finger picking patterns through chord progressions. The clip I'll show you is just a very short straight up demonstration of me playing the etude for how to connect bass lines uh, between chords after having taught it. Check it out, here's the clip. So that's my fingerstyle course. The next one I want to feature is my course called Nail the Changes. This is a huge program. This is like a flagship course on lead guitar improvisation, specifically for jazz in mind, but I kind of uh, communicated with this course that it, it works for any kind of music because the whole premise of it is that we can follow the changes and nail the changes, which is the name of the course, by knowing chord tones so well and by knowing chord tones between chords we can find excellent voice leading and and you know actually hit the good notes of the chord of course it talks about much more than that as well including uh phrasing time feel scales all of that stuff but one of the core things about the uh, methodology that i've used for years for improvising over chord changes is using something that i call the single location improv method which i say which i call slim s-l-i-m where we stay in one position on the fretboard and we map out every single possible type of harmony there and we do very specific exercises with every chord type so we can see it crystal clear every single shape by doing that in every key through the circle of fourths we then have every physical uh and form and shape and hand motion that we need to play anything all over the fretboard it's pretty cool it's it's it, it's a little bit advanced but at the same time this course i have every single exercise listed with a beginner intermediate and advanced um, version of the exercise so without further ado let's jump to this clip this is me demonstrating a uh, very core exercise of the of the program which is playing every chord type the arpeggios of every chord type through the circle of fourths in this one position the clip i'm going to show you is just me demonstrating it straight through every root through the circle of fourths using the half diminished chord this is just one of the exercises it's a game changer exercise if you do this on every chord type. Here's the example. Half diminished. One, two, three, four. That's half diminished. So that course was Nail the Changes. Let's move on to my technique course called Top Notch Technique. And this course is a really big program also that is just me throwing everything into it, that uh, all the stuff that ever helped me with technique, but also in an organized way for how to find and look up maybe the technique elements that we actually want to learn for our playing and our goals. So the clip I'm going to show you is just a tiny little clip where it features um, this thing that I that I called the results index, where I listed every type of result 
that you could get or, or you know anything you could work on any technique you could need to work on say like left hand dexterity or alternate picking or you know pinky strength or just any detail at all i listed all those things out and then i listed which exercises in the program which comes with this huge 80 page exercise book that has all the exercises in it so you can look at what do i want to work on and then which exercises actually could be used to to improve that element that i want to work on the reason i did it this way is because anything we practice can be um we can practice one thing but be focusing on a multitude of different goals within that one thing so somebody hearing you practice something might not have any idea what you're actually practicing, what you're trying to get better at, right? So you could do one particular exercise, but be working on your time. Okay, so you're, what you're practicing is your time. Or you could be doing that same exercise and be working on your tone and your clarity, and making sure it doesn't buzz or something. You could do that same exercise and be working on not gripping too hard, right? Or just your your speed. So all those things are really different things to practice, but the, the exercise itself is the same. So we choose an exercise, but then we choose what to focus on within that. So that's why I organized it this way. What I just said will make more sense when you watch this little clip of how I laid out all the exercises. Let's go to that clip. All right, welcome to this video and this lesson page. This is another resource for you and, uh, and something very unique about this course, uh, finding specific technique solutions with the results index search filter. What am I talking about here? Well, this is something that I'm really excited about. Um, and this is right now, as I'm filming this, we, ha we have this at kind of a, a test kind of beta level version. Maybe we'll improve it later on. But the idea is that, and if you watch the introduction video, you know that any exercise can get an enormous amount of different results based on our needs and based on what we're focusing on. So the results index search filter function here, this is a preliminary version of it. And in your book, there's going to be a uh, even more fleshed out version of it in, in the uh, workbook that you can download. So what you can do is you can look on this uh, list here and say, well, what, you know, what am I wanting to improve and work on? And then go find that where it exists in the course. And so they're kind of all over the place, right? So if you're chord plucking, if you're say a finger style player and your chord plucking is not even, like you're noticing, well, the, the bass note is um, louder always than the other fingers. You know, as we said before, the awareness of knowing how to identify that problem is like a huge part of it. And that can be challenging. But once you notice it, then we can search for, oh, chord plucking evenness. Oh, the exercise on page 44, 78, and 79, all are exercises where we can work on that, right? Um, hybrid picking. Okay, all of these pages have exercises where you can work on hybrid picking. Fretting hand, just finger coordination, strength and flexibility, page 21, 66. So this is our, our kind of jump around, choose your own adventure version. Uh, what is the result that you need? And you might not even know yet, but you could look at this and say, oh, agile wrist angle, like my wrist feels really stiff. I wonder what those exercises are. So that's, that's uh, the uh, point of the results index. And again, that's in your book and that can help you know exactly where to go. Uh, on the page and then each page in the book also will say what video it's from so you can go check out the video uh, from there should guide you through things so that's all I wanted to show you for this and we're going to get into more great stuff in the next lesson videos and we'll be rocking with the technique exercises very soon looking forward to more see you in the next video so that was Top Notch Technique. And the last course I wanna show a little sample of is my course called Chord Melody Magic. And this course is just what it sounds like. And I talk about chord melody on the channel a ton, but how to arrange specifically an arrangement formula for how to turn any melody when you have the melody and the chords into a chord melody arrangement, how to make it unique and your own, how to work on different um, accompaniment styles with the right hand or your, or your plucking hand. Um, and then I have a different, um, kind of upper tier of the course that is all about uh, improvising and soloing called systematic chord soloing. But this this uh, sample, this little clip I'm gonna show you of Chord Melody Magic is just one of the demonstrations that I have in the course of the tune, I'll See You In My Dreams. I love this tune, it's an old jazz tune um, and Django Reinhardt does a very famous version of it, a version that I really love. So I took this tune and uh, just demonstrated using exactly what I teach in the course, demonstrated a chord melody uh, arrangement of it. Here's the clip.
that was Chord Melody Magic. Those are all the courses and samples that I want to show you in this video. I don't mean for this to be a, a shameless plug or anything. Um, you know, it, maybe you found any of that inspiring or helpful, and if not, that's okay. I am committed to putting up my free lessons every Tuesday, and I'll be doing a bunch of new stuff and uh, be experimenting with some different directions I want to go with the YouTube channel next year. And in my video next week, I'll talk more about the details of what that direction uh, is going to be. But I uh, just wanted to share here some of the stuff that's in my courses and again, let you know that you can get 15% off any of the programs if you use the coupon code 202315, 202315 for 15% off, and that's good until January 1st. Uh, well, see you in that next video next week. Hopefully, uh, I publish a new lesson every Tuesday. Thanks for watching. Happy New Year if you're watching this uh, when it's coming out now. And uh, take care. See you soon.